Designing mockups of websites in Photoshop has been around for a long time, and there's some things that you should know about doing this effectively. So we're going to be taking a look at some some organization of layers and also some tools within Photoshop including layer comps and exporting layer comps um, that enable this process to go a little bit better. So um, looking at this first file here, I want to talk about the organization of layers. Um, typically when we design websites we think about sections. This would be the the header or um, we might call it masthead and this would be the navigation here. This right here some people might call it header as well or main section main image or hero possibly. Then we'll have our content and then our footer down here at the bottom. The way that this one is organized with layers um, is a little bit different than normal. We have all of our images, we have all of our texts, and all of our buttons. This is not a way that I would actually um, suggest you organizing layers. And so I found another one, and I found all these Photoshop files online, by the way. Um, here's one that has um, a content section, and then it's got my footer down here somewhere at the bottom. There's the footer. But then it's got all this other stuff here in the middle, which is all tied to the header. So all of that really belongs with the header. So why don't we just make it all part of the same header? In order to do this, you select all those layers, and you can go to Layer, Group Layers, or just use the Control G. And now you'll see that I can double click on that, call it Header. And now I've got that just that header, and it will still have all the different subgroups. And this is a really good idea for organization of your files. Here's one that actually has a very good organization overall. It's got our status bar here at the top. It's got their header. It's got the content. And uh, then it's got our footer at the bottom. So another one that I found actually has the proper, I'd say, the proper design stuff. Now, there's some other things to be aware of that we can do. Um, we can start to apply grids to our layout. Here's one that has a custom grid. In order to see that, I can go to View, Extras, and you'll see all the different um, lines here. Plus, I can turn on their top layer, which they have locked, and it's called Grid. Now, the most common grid system that we really use is called the 960 grid system. But we're going to come back to this one in just a second. So the 960 grid is actually one that I think is really popular and very effective. You can see this one has um, a lot of layers as well. Um, one thing I would, would mention about this one, they've got like the footer um, here at the top. I would probably go ahead and make these things kind of in the order that they appear. like this is the main slide. So the main slide is definitely above the content. The features goes below as well. So if you can make these things kind of fit the way they should in in structure, that's a smart idea. Um, there might be some reasons that you know things were done on top of others. For example, you might see that this footer actually needs to go above certain things. I might have to revert this. Uh, revert. Okay, maybe I didn't change anything. I was concerned that um, I had changed the text that might have been on here, but I guess there is none. Anywho, um, let's bring up the grid. In order to bring up the grid, you'll see that we have our grid here at the top, and we can also go to View, um, Extras, and you'll see here is the 960 grid system. And they've really set up their site to fit that grid system really quite well. You can see these buttons fit it and then you get into the columns and the columns fit that and even the images that pop out of this footer image do that and then the images that are in the footer also fit that grid system. So when you use the grid system um, it can be very effective if you use it directly and of course it makes a really nice design when things are this structured. Now, a um, couple other things that I wanted to look at 
are um, once you've got all these layers and you want to be able to see what your what your design might look like with some different variations then we can start to use what are called layer comps and I thought this particular one um, would work well for layer comps so I'm going to turn off my extras so this doesn't get in the way and layer comps is a way that I can um, show and hide content and create let's say pages themselves. So I'm going to go to window, bring up the one called layer comps, and here's my layer comps window. In order to create a layer comp, all you have to do is click on the new layer comp um, setting. Now by default, the only thing that is turned on is visibility. But if I call this home page one, um, then that will be the first layer comp. And then let me turn off some things. So let me turn off this shopping bag and the map because I know that those really aren't needed. And then I would say that footer, which really if I can put it down here at the bottom so it's where I would expect it, I could take that up and there we go. And now I can create a new one. Now, because I've moved the position of the footer, it's probably a good idea for me to turn on position so that it will remember that it's moved. So if I now want to go and actually look at it, you'll see, uh-oh, well, with the home one, it doesn't remember the position. So once you start moving positions, you really do need to make sure that that has been altered. So in order to change this, I'm just going to take that footer and drag it back down. Let me get it where it should be. There you go. That's close enough for right now. And what I'm going to do is update this. In order to update it, I can go to the layer comp options. Once I have that layer comp selected, choose position, and then choose update. So now it should give me that position move. Now I can also apply layer styles, maybe drop shadows or other effects. Maybe I want to have this e-commerce elements show a highlight or something like that and I can turn on layer styles and also create styles for that. Now what's really nice about these layer comps is that we can use these layer comps to automatically output the files that we need. In order to do this, go over to File, Scripts, and we'll have a couple different options here. We can do layer comps to files. So I just want to choose where these things are going to go. Let's see, this is in PSD mockups. So new folder, this is going to be, um, what is this one? UI Ray-Ban, really. Hit OK. And after about, oh, 20 seconds or so, you should get this. Layer comps to files was successful. Now you can go to the folder where you've saved your files and you'll see that you indeed have those files output. So here's the two files that I output. So that can be really effective. Now you can also, by the way, you can output to scripts to a PDF as well, which is kind of cool because it you can create a PDF from these files automatically. Now I'm just going to keep them as separate files because the next thing that we want to do is actually look at a little bit of interactivity with them. So that's going to be in the next tutorial.